The Noax by Dr. Seuss. At the far end of town where the glicker grass grows, and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows, and no birds ever sing except the old crows, is the street of the lifted low axe. And deep in the glicker grass, some people say, if you look deep enough you can still see today, where the low axe once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the low axe away. What was the low axe and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken some whale from the far end of town where the wicker grass grows? The old ones still lives here. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the ones though, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurking, cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of muff muffled roof. And on special dank midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the loss was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. On the end of a rope, he lets down a tin pail and you have to toss in 15 cents in the nail and the cell of a great 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 grandfather's nail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you've paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his loveless glove. Then he grunts, I will call you by whisper on my phone for the secrets I tell or for your ears alone. Slop, down slops the whisper on my phone to your ear and the old ones those whispers are not very clear since they have to come down through a sniggly hose and he sounds it as if he had smallest bees up his nose. Now I'll tell you, he says with his teeth sounding gray, how the Lorax got lifted away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the pond was still wet and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the swanee, swami swans rang out in space. One morning I came to this glorious place and I first saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright colored tufts of the truffula trees. Mile after mile in the first morning breeze. And under the trees I saw brown boba lutes frisking around in their boba loot suits as they played in the shade of and ate truffula fruits. From the whippiless pond came the comfortable sound of the humming fish humming while splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffular trees, on my life I'd been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk and they had, and they had the sweet smell of fresh buttery milk. I felt a great leaping of joy in my heart. I knew just what I do, I unloaded my coat. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffle tree with one chop. And with great skillful skill and with great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and I needed and I netted a knee. The instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked, I saw something pop out of a stump of the tree I'd chopped down. It was a so it was sort of a man. Describe him that sort, I don't know if I can. He was soulless and old yes, and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was so pit and bossy. Mister, he said with a sawdusty sneeze, I am the Loax and I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs. He was very upset as he shouted and puffed. What's that thing you've made out?
part of my Trophy La Tuft. Look, Laura, as I said, there is no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. It needs a find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. But it has other uses. Yes, we fall beyond that. You can use it for carpets, for pillows, for seats, for curtains, for curtains, for covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, Sure, you are crazy with greed. There was no one on earth who would buy that f- 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 who would buy that fool need. But the very next moment, I proved he I proved he was wrong. For just at that minute, a child came along, and he thought that the need I had knitted was great. He happily bought it for three ninety eight. I laughed at the Lord. You, you poor silly guy. You never can tell what some people will buy. I repeat, cried the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I am busy, I told him. Shut up, if you please. I rushed across to the room, and in no time at all, built a way built a radio phone. I put in a quick call. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty, mighty wet. Get here fast. Take the road to no stitch. Turn left at Weehawken. So wait at South Stitch. I did no time at all in the factory I built, the whole Wunsler family was working full t- tilt. We were all knitting needs, just as busy as bees, to the sound of, chop- of the chopping of truffular trees. Then, oh baby oh, how my business did grow, now chopping one tree at a time was too slow. So I quickly invented my super axe hacker. hacker which whacked our full trophy trees at one smacker. We were making sneeds four times as fast as before, and that Lorax, he didn't show up anymore. But the next week, he knocked on my new office door. He snapped, I'm, I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which you seem to be chopping as fast as you please. But I'm also in charge of the brown bobaloots, who played in the shade in their bobaloo suits and happily lived eating truffle fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffle fruit to go around. And my poor bobaloots are all getting their crummies because they have gas, not food in their tummies. They loved living here, but they can't let them stay. They'll ha- have to find food, and I hope they may. Good luck, boys, he cried, and, I, and he sent th- them away. I, the Wunsler, felt sad as I watched them all go. But business is business, and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I meant no harm. I most truly did not. But I had to grow bigger, so bigger I got. I bigger my factory, I bigger my roads, I bigger my wagons, I bigger the loads of the needs I stepped out. I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went wait on biggering, selling more needs. And I bigger my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the that old n- nonsense L- Lorax came back with more grapes. I am the Lorax, he coughed and he whiffled. He sneezed and he s- snuffled. He s- snuggled, he sniffed. Once there, he cried with a coffee-less croak. Once there, you've, you're making such smogular smoke. My poor swanny swans, why? They can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smog in his throat. 
And so, said the Lorax, please pull to my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They may have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smog you smogged up around here. What's more, snapped the Lorax, his dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gloopity Glop. Your machinery chugs on day and night without stop making gloopity gloop. Also slots the slop. And what do you do with this le with this leftover goo? I'll show you, you dirty, you dirty old once little man, you. You're glopping the pond where the humming fist hummed. No more can they hum, for their girls are all gummed. Now I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dewy. They'll walk on their fins and get woefully weary in search of some watery water that isn't so smeary. And then they got mad. I got terribly mad. mad. I yelled at the Lord. Now listen, you dad. All you do is, is yap yap and say, bad, 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 bad. Well, I have my way, sir, and I'm telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And, for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering, Tuning more truffula trees into sneeze, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. And at that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside in the fields came a sickening smack of an ash on a tree. Then we heard the tree fall. The very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more needs, no more work to be done. So, in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone, all waved me goodbye. They jumped into my cars and wove away under the smoke smuggling stars. Now, all that was left neath the bad smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance, just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance, as he lifted himself by the seat of his pants, and I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he, he when he, he said, he stood himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the one word, unless, whatever that meant, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago. But each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years, when my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, says the Wensler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems perfectly clear. Unless someone like you tells a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, Cat calls the Wensler. He lets something fall. It's a truffle seed. The last one of all. You're in search of the last of the truffula seeds. And truffula trees are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula. Treat it with care. Give it clean water and feed it for sale. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. <laughs>